Good morning everyone, I'm Deborah Kozlik and welcome to Creating Your Memories. Today I'm going to show you a simple layout and we are going to be using the Barn and Fence Border Maker cartridge and that is using our Border Maker system and also with coordinating with that I'm going to be using on the farm designer papers and stickers. I have two photos that I'm going to use on my layout today and they measure at 5 by 4 and the papers that I have chosen to use for my layout is the Red Gimmon and these are all in the on, the on the Farm designer paper pack and then you've got the plaid look on the back and then also the green and that's sort of like a plaid look it's got like tiny tiny squares I'm not sure if you could see that and on the reverse side you have the corn and you know any farm vegetable variety and then the wood look and then you have the cow print on the reverse side so to start off with using our red gimmon and earlier I posted a video of how I made this layout here using the barn and fence border maker cartridge and I punched around a 12 by 12 square so I'm going to do similar to that but a little bit different so we'll get started so we need our border maker system and our cartridge I'm going to insert my paper and I'm going to punch down that one side all the way down from the top to the bottom so we're just going to punch as normal and then I'm going to flip it around so we're going to do similar to what I showed you earlier in the other video but I'm only going to punch three sides. As if you're punching a normal border. So then we'll now do one more side. So lining it up starting from the top all the way to the bottom so we don't need our border maker system now so we can put that aside so now I'm going to get my micro tip scissors and I'm just going to trim up that corner to neaten it off so it's just got a fence look in the corner so you don't really have to take a lot off it's just going to leave that square or if you don't like that look you can actually cut that bit off and leaving it flat is another way of doing that so we only need to do that to the two corners, just making sure that I do exactly the same as what I just did on the reverse side and then I cut that bit off and down there and then straighten this one out. So as you can see, I've just neatened my corners a little bit. So now I'm going to get my base paper and for that I'm going to be using the, the wood grain. So I'm just winging this and I thought about this idea as after I punch you know like going around the four squares so I think I might bring in my 12 inch trimmer now and just trim some of that from the bottom 
because I do want to add some border stickers or something added to that so I might maybe take off just line that bottom edge up on the half inch line and cut half an inch off so I'll see how that looks and see how that works and see if that's going to be enough so I think that should be right because then I wanted to add these stickers here on the bottom Putting that back on and going up. Yeah, so I think I might leave it at that. Or I might take might take another half an inch off. So that make I've taken a complete inch off from the bottom. So you could actually do that before you decide to punch. If you like but you can also use these little strips for something else so you can just put them in with all your other stash pieces a few scraps and you can use that for a different layout or you can also use them for like journaling boxes or something like that so I'm happy with that so I'm going to get my repositional tape now mainly put it in on those small bits so they hold down in place. So just putting a little bit on each end of those. I won't worry about the bottom because we will be sticking that down with some stickers. Just put a little bit of tape runner on. So now lining this up, I might do it back to front so I know how much I want from the top. So just positioning it evenly on your page. I think that looks about right. So now that I've got that down for my base, so I want to incorporate this leafy down the bottom yeah so that works better of cutting an inch off um so that will go up to about okay so now i want to put the fence on first and then i'll use the green so just getting my fence and probably just getting a ruler to see how far I go up from the bottom. Yeah, let's do it this side. So there's my one inch. So I'm probably taking it up to one and a half from the bottom. So putting that fence on. Oops, picked up use a little bit of scrap of confetti over here from my punch out pieces. It's just not going to help sticking that down. And then I want another one and a half over this side. So lining that up. Be about there. So I've got my fence on, and then I'll use my greenery for the bottom. So this is more or less going to hang on, covering the bottom. And having also the fence. So now with my photos, 
as I said, they were uh, five by four. So I want to cross them over something like this. And in my photo mats, I thought that I'll back them in the green. So now I'm going to cut them at four and a half. by five and a half so you actually need two of those so that was two photo mats at four and a half by five and a half you could also use you know like your standard six by four and maybe just add a quarter of a photo mat for your photos but because I have my photos a little bit smaller I thought I'd just make that matting a little bit wider so I'm just going to adhere my photos down on my photo mats I get my centering ruler so I know that they're straight and that will help me guide it so just putting it down Where are we? So be a quarter on either side. And then the other one. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to hear these down on my base page. So as I said, I wanted to cross them over on an angle a little bit. I'm not sure if I wanted to keep one straight or have them both on like an angle. I think that looks pretty good like that. And then I have enough room, you know, like to do some journaling and doing a title and some clusters. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to adhere them down onto my base page and then we'll work on the stickers. Okay, now we're going to look at the stickers and working out what ones that I would use on my layout and I think I might use farm sweet farm I think I might back that with some foam squares so I'm going to use the larger foam squares but I'm also going to just cut them in half so that way that getting the most out of my foam squares and then just one more cross in the middle so I'm thinking I might put it maybe I think I might put it here oops And then incorporating my front sunflowers onto the layout as well. So it's crossing that over a little bit. And then maybe like that. So I would hear this one down. go over the photo just a tiny bit like that and then I've got one more sunflower 
might just get my multi-purpose tool and just slide that one under but more so on the opposite photo because of Mahalia being here I don't want to cover up any of her with a sticker so I might leave it like that so there goes my title and then incorporating maybe some animals or the horse and then we have the foal I do like home on the range that's a nice one so no, I don't think I really like that there I just have the bigger one and then the small one oops on the side but it may I might put some foam squares so I'm just gonna get the smaller foam squares and raise it up to give it some dimension from the mama foal I should say from the mama horse and put the foal near the horse just getting those backings off the foam squares Um, right. Oh, so I might put it here. Then I might put a little journaling box down the bottom here. Um, Yeah, because there are more, more or less headings and whatnot on that page. Yeah, so I might leave it like this. So, you know, there's a simple layout that you could actually do using your barn and fence cartridge. And that was a border maker system. Um, cartridge that was brought out with on the farm and I've just used you know like three standard designer papers and I've used the sticker sheet to complete this layout today so if you enjoyed my video today please don't forget to subscribe to my channel hit the bell so then you know when I've got a new notification up give me some love like my videos comment until next time, everyone, happy scrapping.